Hi everyone, I'm Kohei Obata. Today I'm gonna talk about dynamic multi-network mining of tensor time series. This work is conducted by me, Koki Kawabata, Yasuko Matsubara, and Yasu Sakurai from Sanken Osaka University. This is the outline for today. And first I'm gonna start with an introduction. Thanks to the development of the IoT, time series sequence can be generated from multiple attributes or modes forming tensor time series. Although tensor is a generalization of a vector, in this research, we refer to a tensor time series as a time series sequence that contains more than three modes. An example of tensor time series is an online activity data. If you obtain a certain amount of some queries for some years, it forms multivariate time series. If you obtain it from some countries, then it forms third order tensor. These tensor time series can be often divided and grouped into subsequences that have similar traits, which are clusters. Subsequence clustering is one of the most important tasks for data mining. It helps uncover interesting patterns that can be also used as a subrouting for some downstream tasks, such as imputation or forecasting. As well as discovering clusters, the interpretability of the resulting cluster is also essential since we don't know what each cluster referred to. For example, let's say we have a multivariate time series for simplicity and we obtain four segments and three clusters after subsequence clustering. But there are problems for understanding this resulting. We don't know how does green differ from blue and what happened in 2020 when the cluster suddenly changed. We assume that the dependency network gives a clear explanation of those questions. Dependency network encodes the relationship between variables, and by comparing the network, we can tell the differences between green and pink clusters. And by visualizing the network, we can speculate what happened on 2020 when the cluster changed. Existing work of subsequence clustering has been done in univariate or multivariate um, time series. Univariate methods such as k-means uh, find clusters by matching low values, so that it is difficult to uh, interpret the result. Several multivariate methods based on network has been done. Um, this method discover clusters that other traditional methods cannot find. However, tensor time series clustering is more challenging. It has to deal with an intricate dependency and a huge data size due to the existence of modes. Also, simply applying multivariate methods provide a network that contains the large number of nodes and edges, which hinders our interpretation, and it also requires a heavy computational time. Next, I talk about some background knowledge. In this study, we define a network as an inverse covariance matrix of the Gaussian distribution. The network can be expressed as a graph, and the important feature of this network is that if there is an edge between two variables, then they are dependent given the rest of the variables. It means it encodes the dependency between features. In this study, we use graphical lasso to infer a sparse network. The sparsity of the networks helps us understand the important relationships. It infers the sparse networks given the multivariate time series by minimizing these equations consists of Gaussian log likelihood and L1 known. Here we formulate our problem. Given tensor time series, where dn is the number of the dimension at mode n and t is the time step. We aim to find the cluster parameter m that minimizes the cost function. Uh, we will explain this cost function later. The cluster parameter is the clustering result, which contains the cluster assignment set and model parameter set. Cluster assignment set shows um, which cluster each time step is assigned to. And each cluster has a model that is described as a theta, and model parameter set is a set of the model. These are some symbols and definitions of some words. And time sheets can be separated by segment. 
um, can be separated into segment by cut point, which is the starting point of the segment. And cluster is the set of the segment described as theta. And here the K is the number of the clusters. Then we talk about our method. To achieve interpretable subsequence clustering, we propose DMM, dynamic multi-network mining. We achieve tensor time series clustering by these by following these three steps. First, we characterize a cluster with multiple network by extending graphical lasso to tensor time series. In this model, um, in this model, each mode has a dependency network. Then we define the cost function based on the minimum description length. By minimizing this cost function, it can determine any hyperparameters, including the number of the clusters. And at last, we propose the algorithm that minimizes the cost. It's based on the bottom-up algorithm, and it scales linearly with regard to the data size, thus it can be applicable to the long and large tensor time series. So first, we explain our model. We model tensor time series with n networks, which contribute to the interpretability, as each mode has a sparse network. It finds n sparse networks by inputting a tensor time series by minimizing this function consists of the likelihood and L1 norm. Concretely, this equation can be minimized by solving graphical lasso problem for each mode independently. This is a convex optimization problem, and we use ADMM to solve it. Here we talk about our cost function. We define the cost function that can be regarded as a criterion for the goodness of the clustering based on the minimum description length, MDL. MDL, uh, which assumes that the more we compress the data, the more we generalize its underlying structures. And by minimizing this cost function, it can determine any hyperparameters. The cost function consists of four terms. And coding length cost and model coding cost are the description complexity of the model parameter. Data coding cost is the log likelihood of the data given the model. And as the name suggests, L1 norm cost is just an error norm. So this is our algorithm for finding the cluster parameters that minimizes the cost function. It scales linearly with regard to the data size. And it finds the local optimum of the cost function. It consists of two steps, cut point detector and cluster detector. Cut point detector is based on the bottom up algorithm. It's initialized with the initial segment size W. And as the figure shows, it merges neighboring segment if the cost improves. It iteratively merges segment until the cut, cut point are stable. After the cut point detector, we fix the cut point and find the cluster assignment and the number of the clusters via cluster detector. This cluster detector varies the number of the cluster from one, and at each iteration, it calculates the cost. It lasts until the cost starts to increase. So this was the whole process of our model. Now we talk about experiment. We show some experimental results to show how the MM can help us understand the real world data. This is a COVID data set where it measures the search amount of six queries related to COVID-19 taken from 10 countries for 10 years. After processing by DMM, DMM discovers four clusters and capture the effect against COVID-19. And each cluster is characterized with a country and query network. We name each cluster before COVID, outbreak, vaccine, and adaptation. To explain a few findings, before COVID, there were edges only between English-speaking countries. However, during the outbreak, many countries simultaneously reacted to the COVID-19 and they form edges. In the query network, 
vaccine was first connected with influenza before COVID. But in the vaccine phase, which started from the summer of the 2020, people started to care about the prevention from the COVID-19 and vaccine is strongly connected with COVID. We then compare DMM with existing multivariate method to show the interpretability of DMM. These are the clustering assignment of DMM and the comparison method. As you can see, DMM finds seasonality. On the contrary, existing method failed to find reasonable clusters. And these are the networks obtained by DMM and the baselines. DMM provides simple, two, two simple networks which contribute to our understanding of the data. On the other hand, uh, existing methods find uh, networks which have a large number of nodes and edges which hampers our understanding of the data. So this is the accuracy result of the DMM using synthetic data. We showed our proposed method is more accurate even with the multivariate time series data. And we also showed that it is robust with the changes of the number of the clusters. And at last, we showed the scalability of DMM. Thanks to the proposed algorithm, DMM scales linearly with regard to the input data size. We then compare the computational time with the existing method using real world data set including third order and fourth order tensor. The MM is the fastest, and it is up to 300 times faster than baselines. Especially, it, it's quite fast when it handles the fourth order tensor. This is because existing method has to flatten the tensor and deal with the large number of variables. So at last, the conclusion. We propose the DMM, which is a useful tool for the tensor time series analysis. And this could be a possible applications. Thank you for the thank you for listening. The these are the code and data sets.